The Pittsburgh Pirates are hot, winners of six in a row, and tonight they take their act to the south side of Chicago, U.S. Cellular Field, where the Pirates and White Sox will continue this four-game set. Hi again, everyone, with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Never. Robbie Smokowski with us shortly. The Pirates have won the first two games against the White Sox. They have won five of the last six games by way of shutout. The second time the Pirates have done that in their franchise history. The last time, 1903. Well, it certainly has been an amazing thing to watch. And, you know, I mean, who's ever seen anything like this before? I know I certainly uh, haven't. I don't think at any level uh, the numbers up there speak for themselves. It's been incredible. I mean, if they keep this up, Major League Baseball is going to have to uh, shorten the mounds again like they did back in 68. It's, it's just uh, one of those things now. We're just looking at this an inning at a time to see how far they can take it. The Pirates pitching is our T-Mobile game changer. A guy who hopes to keep pace with the rest of his brethren in the Pirates rotation is Jeff Locke. He did his part last time out against the Phillies, throwing six shutout innings against Philadelphia. Well, Jeff might not have that gaudy ERA like some of the other guys that he's out there pitching with, but at the same time, he's been doing his job last couple of starts. He's been, you know, keeping us in the ball game, giving us a great chance to win. And as you said, in the last start against the Phillies, he went out there and put up 6-0. So, uh, you know... Locke is uh, right now pitching just like all the rest of the guys are. I imagine they got a little competition going right now to see who's going to crack first. Jeff Locke making his first appearance ever against the White Sox. His catcher has been fantastic. We'll take a look at Francisco Cervelli when we return to Chicago after this on Root Sports. Frank Thomas, big slugger here on the south side. Francisco Cervelli has been a big slugger lately, too. How about the job he's been doing at the plate box? Uh, he's uh, you know, one of those guys, as soon as we saw him in spring training, it, you know, it didn't even matter what he did. He could strike out. Those first few at bats, you knew right away, okay, this guy's going to be able to hit. His approach at the plate is so good. He knows that strike zone. 
Uh, not surprising at all to see what he has done at the plate. Our lows never stop improving. 324 is the top average among major league catchers. Top on base percentage at 404. Tied for first with three plus hit games and 55 hits for Francisco. That ties him for fifth among major league catchers. So Francisco Cervelli certainly has been a big bright spot for the Pirates behind the plate and at the plate. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Rob King standing by with a State Farm game break. Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. Chicago White Sox have taken the field in their circa 1983 uniforms. And the Pirates will have a designated hitter in play in an American League ballpark. It won't be Corey Hart. Hart's playing first. And we'll tell you who is the DH. We take a look at the Pirates lineup brought to you by Toyota. Harrison and Marte. Well, the last four games, 12 for 19. He has been absolutely on a tear. Andrew McCutcheon is the designated hitter tonight. Jung Ho Gung bats cleanup. Francisco Cervelli fifth. Mercer and Rodriguez in left field. Corey Hart batting eighth, playing first. And Gregory Polanco in right field, batting ninth tonight. And facing the left-hander, John Danks, who is the longest tenured member of the White Sox. He's been on this roster since 2007. Well, I look at the uh, the walks, 21, and then you throw in the uh, the 303 opponent batting average. That is a ton of base runners. And he hasn't been getting many ground balls. A lot of balls going in the air. So he's also uh, given up 10 home runs this year. Uh, it has not uh, worked out very well for him. And uh, that's reflected in that very high ERA. 
the guys behind Danks in the field tonight. Defense for the White Sox presented by Honda. See Giovanni Soto back behind the plate. He'll complete the battery. The outfield left to right Cabrera Eaton and Garcia and back and back out of third base Ramirez at short Sanchez at second and Jose Abreu is at first base. The U.S. Cellular Field Pirates haven't been here since 2010. The Bucks have taken the first two games of this series by way of shutout. And uh, hoping to get this first one on the road on this brief five game road trip. Josh Harrison leads off. And he takes a strike and we're underway. Harrison hitting 281. He takes up high one and one Josh last night with a base hit in the seventh inning extended his hitting streak from five to six games. Thanks one one pitch one on and that's hit down the line a fair ball Harrison around first he'll head to second base and Josh will pull in with a leadoff stand up double. Was up a little bit. Uh, Danks is going to throw mainly fastball changeup. That's his uh, his mo. He's not a hard thrower at all. Going to be uh, you know, just up there, you know, 88, 89 most of the time. Jay Hay with double number 16. Man in scoring position, nobody out. And Danks will now face Starling Marte. This is just the second career start for John Danks against the Pirates. Started against the Bucks at PNC Park on the 16th of June, 2010. Almost five years ago to the date. Nothing in one to Marte. His average up there, 286. Multi hit game last night, two hit game. And he bunts. And the bunt will move Harrison over to third easily. Marte out at first. So now a man at third base and one out. Okay. Yeah, positive out. Rivers Casino tips to win tonight, Bob. Yeah, I like to see some home runs. Uh, you know, we got a struggler, uh, struggling lefty out there that throws a lot of fly balls. Let's get the ball over the fence off him a little bit. And then, uh, you know, Corey Hart's getting a start. Uh, and I think this is a perfect guy to get him going a little bit. He's going to have four ba bats in a row uh, against this lefty. And it would be nice to get uh, Hart out of his slump. Going to need him down the stretch. Be a valuable guy coming off the bench. Uh, you know, we know that he's got that pop in his bat. It'd be great to have a little long ball threat. McCutcheon, the designated hitter. One strike pitch fouled off, and it's 0 2. McCutcheon with an RBI opportunity with Harrison now at third base. 293 the average. 41 runs batted in for Andrew. A great opportunity to make it 42. Marte set him up. One out. Jay Hay just. About 85 feet away. Maybe not 85. How about 80 feet? You know, a decent lead with Beckham playing in. You can get off at least as far as the third baseman. Ben Hurdle looking for a run here in the top of the first inning. He's in scoring position. Cuts with a 413 average. Infield in. One out. Harrison at third. Two balls and two strikes. John Danks, 30 years of age. Second straight left hander. The, or the third straight left hander, I should say. The White Sox have run out against the Pirates. Catch and fouls this one on. Not much difference in the uh, Pirate batting average uh, this year. Lefties, righties. 256, 258. Ventura, manager of the White Sox, and so now the count four. 
Ventura, Oklahoma State product. Talked to Jordy Mercer about him before the game. And Jordy was a freshman at Oklahoma State. He had a chance to meet Ventura. He's always talked about as being one of the more prominent alumni baseball players at Oklahoma State. And the pitch. Swung on a little tapper down toward third, fouled off. Harrison will have to head back to third base. Harrison, by the way, with 40 doubles from the leadoff spot since the beginning of last year. That's the third most in the National League behind Denard Span of Washington and Matt Carpenter of the Cardinals. Carpenter with 44, Span with 52. Payoff pitch from Danks to McCutcheon coming. And he hits a little tapper again, foul. Since the 9th of May, the Pirates have the best record in the major leagues 24 and 11. You see that change up grip, and that's going to be the, the majority of the uh, off speed pitches are going to be that change up. And it almost looks, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if it's because the camera's a little off uh, from directly behind the, or not, but doesn't it look like the ball kind of moves toward the right hand hitter? It did. And McCutcheon belts it to left field. It's 1 0 Pirates. McCutcheon drives in Jay Hay, RBI number 42, and that is the 54th first inning run given up by the Chicago White Sox, the most in Major League Baseball. Oh, you love to get on top first. Now John Danks now has an ERA in the first inning of just over six. A fastball up and away. I was about to mention that change up the way it looks like it kind of comes into the right hander. The reason I bring that up is because most of the time your change up will fade the other direction. Well, Jung Ho hits one the other way. Deep. This ball is gone. gone a home run. Jung Ho Ho and a bottle of rum. That's a two run shot. And the Pirates up 3 0 in the top of the first. Fourth home run for Jung Ho. The Pirates strike early again against the White Sox. They did this in game one two days ago. Well, Jung Ho started off as the guy on the bench most of the time. He started getting some starts, but it was down a little bit in the lineup. Now he's worked his way up to the middle part of the lineup and just keeps hitting. And, and that's kind of the last piece of the puzzle to me is. What kind of power is he going to show by the end of the season? What else is interesting, Bob, about Jung Ho? It's his fourth homer, but it's his third home run that he hit on the first pitch of an at bat. He hit it there where it was pitched. That ball's up and away. He didn't try to get out there and, and pull it. Just take it the same direction. Well, the Bucks with three runs in the top half of the first inning. Still one out. Garcia went after it, ran out of room. Cervelli takes the ball low and away. Yeah, I think he likes that cleanup spot. Started hitting in that spot recently. And has been producing some runs. Jeff Locke has some runs on the board. Before he gets to go to work, well, he looks real happy about it, doesn't he? <laughs> you see the numbers about first inning runs now 56 allowed for Chicago. So Dully down on strikes, two away. Incidentally, the White Sox have scored only 19 first inning runs. That's the lowest in the major leagues. So they're on both sides of the spectrum, scoring the least and giving up the most in the first inning. Robin Ventura recently asked about it. He can't really figure it out. Says it's a, it's a phenomenon that needs to go away, as was his quote today. The pitch to Jordy Mercer misses for a ball. Uh, Charlie Morton last night dazzled him. Seven shutout innings. 
5 and 0 now for Charlie Morton. And Jordy right down to Beckham at third base. Pirates with three runs on three hits and the home run by Jung Ho Gun. Three nothing after a half inning in Chicago. And base hit to score Josh Harrison. It is three to nothing after a half inning. Chicago White Sox lineup brought to you by Honda. Adam Eaton will lead off. Melky Cabrera batting in the two spot. Abreu third. Abasayo Garcia. Then Adam LaRoche will be the designated hitter, hitting 341 career against the Pirates. Ramirez, Beckham, Soto, and Sanchez round out the White Sox batting order. Jeff Locke's numbers brought to you by Hyundai. And uh, they're getting better. Hey, that ERA was up there for a while, but got it down in the fours now. Hopefully tonight, bring it down a little more. You get you get down into the mid fours, that's pretty respectable. I think that's probably what uh, Jeff is shooting for. Four even would be a, a great target. Lock, first time ever against the White Sox, facing Adam Eaton. And the first pitch is in for a strike. Eaton hitting 243, three home runs. And the first inning, Eaton with a 154 average. Leadoff guy hasn't been getting on a lot. There's a comebacker. And the throw to first, and Eaton is out. One gone for the White Sox. Melky. Jeff will face the switch hitting Melky Cabrera after Eaton grounds out. Starling Marte getting the start in center field as we take a look at the Pirates defense. Rodriguez in left, Polanco in right. Young Mercer, Harrison, and Hart around the infield with Cervelli and Locke, the battery. Here is Melky Cabrera. He had hit fourth and fifth in games one and two. Here in game three, he's hitting in the two spot where he has hit primarily throughout the course of the season thus far. And ground ball to the left side. Jordy Mercer handles it. Fires one over to Corey Hart for an out. Two gone. Malky not hitting right handed very well. And the White Sox don't hit lefties very well. Too. Not away, but the Brewers the Brewers. And the worst team batting against left hand pitchers than that. And the Brewers are hitting like 190 something. That's, that's pretty bad. And Cabrera went into that at bat, right handed, hitting 107. Here is Jose Abreu. I think they're 203, I think, as a team. That pitch is in for a strike to Abreu. 203 is not going to get it done. No, that's a good hitting pitcher. <laughs> it's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Interesting way to look at it. Well, you can't look at it. It's like, true, though. You can't look at it like that here, though, can you? 
One ball and one strike to Abreu. There is the pitch on the way. It's low. So Jeff got two quick ground ball outs. Got Eaton, got Cabrera. Now Abreu up. Pirates playing Abreu to pull. And a swing and a miss. Count is even two balls and two strikes. Three men on the left side of the infield. Jay Hay closest to second base. Corey Hart with the right side of the infield to himself. 2 2 from Locke. Uh, back. Look out the bus window today on the way here because it's not the way we normally go to a ballpark in Chicago. Just wanted to see what we've been missing all this time. Museums. Do you find yourself doing that too? Pitch outside, three and two. Well, I've been down that way. Oh. The Blackhawks, the Stanley Cup champions, expected to be here tomorrow. This one popped up. Corey Hart going out after it. Polanco chasing it. Polanco and foul ground will make the running catch. An 11 pitch inning for Jeff Locke. He retires the side in order. Gregory Polanco. Well, tomorrow it's another edition of Inside Pirates Baseball. Francisco Cervelli gets a load of his favorite soccer club, Juventus from Italy. And of course, Garrett Cole featured as well. That's Inside Pirates Baseball. The UPMC scoreboard, 3-0 Pirates. Garrett Cole will pitch tomorrow. He'll go opposite Jeff Samarja in game four. Sean Rodriguez will start things off here in the top of the second inning. And the first pitch is down and away. Two sixty two for Sean. He pops this pitch up. It'll be playable. Abreu just across the line. Now he goes back into fair territory. And there's one out. I think John really liked that. That's one of the higher pop flies we'll see. But when they hit them that high, they know that it was just a matter of a quarter inch or so on the baseball from a, a real long one. Now Corey Hart playing first base tonight, batting in the eighth spot. I'd love to see Corey get, get it going and uh, be a nice contributor to the win tonight. Corey takes a strike. Corey's had a battle with a swing in the miss lately. A 
one pitch is low. One ball and one strike to Corey. Here it is a pinch hitter last night struck out. And swings and misses here and that's strike two one ball and two strikes. Recorded his 1000th career hit on the 13th of April in the Pirates home opener with a pinch hit home run off of Anibal Sanchez and Corey swings and strikes out. And there are two gone for the Pirates. Way out in front of that change. So two men down and Gregory Polanco. Batting in the nine spot. Well, he is a converted pitcher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when was the last time he pitched? Before he signed his first pro contract. He was probably 15 years old. Yeah. 16 years old. And he takes a strike here. One ball and one strike. That's an interesting lineup with him in the nine spot. Get him at bats against the left hander, and that's one thing that Clint had talked to me about a couple of weeks ago that he does want Gregory to learn to hit lefties. Well, this is not your, your typical lefty that's got like a real good breaking ball that's going to really mess him up. It's not so much learning to hit lefties. It's about hitting left handers better and not getting yourself in a situation where you're going to platoon. They want Polanco to be an everyday player. Whether it's a right hander or a left hander out there. They want Polanco to get hits. John Danks delivering the 2 2. And Gregory pops it up. Long run for Beckham, the third baseman, and he will chase it and run out of room. He tripped over the end of the wow, he rain tarp. He hit it pretty good. Hip check. Seems to be all right. He took one quick look right there. And I think he he must have thought that he had a, a little bit more room. He just challenged it. So Beckham back to third base. We gotta love that effort. Yeah, good effort. In the two two, it's in the dirt full count. Yeah, that's the pitch you like to see. Polanco lay off of not chase after lefty on lefty. There's the wind the payoff. Foul it back. And Josh Harrison is one for one with a double on deck. It's putting a three spot on the board in the top of the first. Everything is away to Polanco. Gregory stays alive with another foul ball. Extended at bat between Polanco and Danks. And he'll get another pitch. Same with that swing. He Looks like with the lefty out there, he is feeling for the ball out there a little. The, the ball that's away from him. Three ball, two strike pitch. Ground ball to the right side. Sanchez, a close play at first base. But they get Polanco. It took Danks ten pitches to retire Gregory Polanco.
Charlie has that scoreless inning streak going, and Charlie Morton has thrown over 14 consecutive scoreless innings to Cervelli. And earlier he discussed the comfort level that he brings to those pitchers on the mound. It's confidence in himself. It's confidence in his game calling. It's the time that he takes to to study hitters, and he's he's watching guys in the box. I, I you know I'll look in for a sign, and he's looking at the hitter. Searidge about this as well, Tim and Bob. And the one thing that Searidge said is, with Cervelli, it's in his DNA. He does things that you can't really teach. And you heard Morton discuss that just a second ago. So yeah, the numbers are what they are. But a lot of that stuff and the ease that he puts his pitchers at on the mound is quite impressive. It has been uh, impressive to say the least. We'll uh, we'll ask Ray Sirridge about that. We'll talk to him coming up during the game shortly. He'll join us from the dugout. The pitch to Avasail Garcia inside for a ball, and it's one and one to the right fielder for the White Sox. Two seventy-five, the average for Garcia, getting in the cleanup spot tonight. Two balls and a strike. See the throwback uniforms. They even come with the 50th anniversary All Star game patch. They're trying to bring back the magic from 1983 when this team was the Western Division champions in the American League. That was back when they just had East and West, no Central. The pitch on the way. And Garcia goes down on strikes, one up. He was managing that 83. Was that Larus? Might have been. That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Breaking ball down and in. Right over the top of it. Garcia now has struck out four times in this series. Here's Adam LaRoche, just his second at bat. He had a pinch hit at bat last night, turned into a fielder's choice. I was chatting with Adam today and he told me that uh, his brother Andy finally hung him up. Andy was in spring training with the White Sox. He said that uh, Andy has now joined his brother Jeff in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and is taking the first summer of his life off. And a strike on the outside corner. That'd be a weird feeling. Well, that beard really goes well with the uh, throwback unit. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> sharp. 2 1. Red on red. Count is even. Two balls and two strikes. Harold Baines. What a hitter. What an 83 team. Still working with the team. He's the assistant hitting coach of the White Sox. That Jim Leland was the uh, third base coach on that team. Carlton Fisk. And LaRoche goes down on strikes. Back to back strikeouts for Jeff Locke. He's got four in the game. Two men out for the White Sox. Our Barrel Automotive League leaders. Stat Pirates pitching with Major League ranks first and everything but innings per start. For their second. Starters ERA 279. That really, I think, points out how important it is to throw a lot of ground balls. Here's Alexei Ramirez. Shortstop takes a strike. Upstairs, one ball and one strike. These guys part of the pregame parade. They had a big parade on the warning track here before the game today. Tons of kids and little league teams out here. One, two. Fouled off. A lot of red in the stands. Lock on sweaters everywhere. Yeah. 
Even the green Blackhawks were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really celebrating here for a couple of nights. And the one two. And the dirt two balls and two strikes. And we understand the uh, Stanley Cup. And the guys that won it will be making their way to U.S. Cellular Field tomorrow. And a well, foul ball just got a piece of. And of course, a Mario Lemieux jersey has to be here. That's appropriate. Whenever Pittsburgh's in town, you not only see the baseball jerseys, but you will see a Lemieux jersey. And Locke strikes out the side. We'll visit with Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage on the other side of this break. By Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage. And uh, as a wise man once said, it's all about the coaching, right, Ray? No, it's not. It's all about the players, the pitchers. <laughs> 32 straight scoreless innings. It's quite an achievement to watch the body of work that they go out there. And uh, they're all disciplined. They have a plan. They work that plan. And we can't really forget the other two guys that are involved with the pitching staff is Cervelli and Stewart who are tremendous back there and work hand in hand with each and every one of them. <laughs> you know Ray it's not just your starters either is the, the bullpen has been uh, doing a fantastic job and I, I really kind of want to uh, point out Melanson uh, you know, early on uh, a lot of media and and us up here we talked about oh he's not throwing very hard what's wrong with him and and it, it just seems like now he's as good or better than ever this was was nothing it was just a phase that he was going through I mean right now hindsight's 2020 uh, Clinton and I spoke about it several times and we were going to just hang with him and mm -hmm. make sure that we could help him get through this and uh, lo and behold now we look like geniuses and <laughs> The guy has uh, always been solid throughout, and we can't forget the body of work that he's done years before. So we were going to help him get through this. We were going to hang on to him and just uh, say, hey, you know, take one game at a time, and things have uh, worked themselves out extremely well in our favor. Well, Mark's a pretty positive guy too, isn't he? I mean, he's a kind of attitude that it, he's going to get through something like that. Exactly, and one thing about him too that we know of is his work ethic. So it wasn't. We knew it wasn't the lack of. Uh, it might have been a little bit too much, and uh, you know we backed off a little bit on him, and uh, he's bounced back tremendously, and he's Mark of old. <laughs> yep, that's for sure. 
Here comes the 2 2 pitch to Josh Harrison. And that is low. A little bit of a discrepancy as to whether or not Soto had caught that last foul tip or not, but uh, it was ruled not. So now the count is full three and two. And visiting with Pirates pitching coach Ray Searage this inning. John Danks gets ready to deliver to Jay Hay. And Josh pops this one up back of the plate. And Soto will chase it down near the screen, and he makes the catch. That ball went as far as it could without leaving play. So there is one out. Hey, Ray, one of the, uh, the traits that we see all pitchers that, that have played somewhere else and they come here and have success, they suddenly attack the strike zone. What is it that you do or say that gets them to do that? Well, it's our core values that we start from the big leagues and filter it all the way down to the mig, uh, the minor leagues, and it's it's first pitch strikes. Uh, do make something happen with three pitches or less. Stay aggressive and compete from pitch one. So your your attack, you throw the first punch. Um, you basically are going to just. Uh, be on. <laughs> Don't crack up, Ray. Right? You're, you're going to be attacked. Is what's yeah, going to happen? I know. No, we, we we try to stay aggressive right from the first pitch and all the way through the game until Clint takes the ball out of your hand. So, it's uh it's a mindset that they've developed and they've taken it steps further than what we've talked about and. They, they, they understand that, and they're getting results from it. So are, we're are, trying to stay that way. Are you kind of like a dad with a dozen <laughs> sons? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and they all got different personalities, too. So that makes it very uh, challenging. And Marte hits a one-hopper to Alexei Ramirez. That is out number two. Can you feel the sunflower seeds hitting oh, your head definitely. and your back? I'm trying to ignore it. <laughs> good job. Pretty good job. But, but uh, you know, this really what you're seeing down there. What we're looking at is that how how much these guys really love you and how much fun they are having right now <laughs> with all this stuff going on. And it's got to be just a, a great pleasure for you. It is. Uh, I have. I. It's fun to come to the ballpark mm -hmm. every day. Uh, I'm very a lucky man to be with these guys and to work with them and for them to develop and build a trust with me. Uh, whether it be with uh, personal stuff or even baseball stuff, it's uh, there's no holes barred. They know who I am. I know how they are. I respect their space. I respect the work that they do in the pen and out on the mound. And uh, I had my spikes in the ground, so I, I have a lot of empathy for them. But overall, it comes down to not really me. It's these unique bunch of guys, uh, I am so lucky to be working with them. Tremendous, tremendous men. And is this, this has to be uncharted waters for you right now. 32 straight scoreless innings. You've got five games out of six that are shutout wins. I mean, you ever seen anything like that? No, I, I never have. I never expected it either. So we're going to embrace it. Um, but. We're going to go out and compete every day. We're not going to try to get six out of seven shutouts. If that happens, that's good. Uh, we're going to go out and try to beat you, uh, the opposing team, the opposing hitters, in any way, which, which way we can. So we're going to stay aggressive in that manner. Yeah, I, I've seen uh, starting rotations that they have. They play a little game, like, like who's going to be the first guy <laughs> not to get a win? Well, in this club, it's like, who's going to be the first guy to give up a run? <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it pretty is. But they feed off each other. Uh, they talk to each other, which um, I encourage uh, 110%. Uh, I've learned that when I was coming in, and Bobby, you probably too, when you played, uh, how you talk to other pitchers and how they face these guys and what pitch to use in this situation what what little nuances to pick up on a hitter uh, that I could use for my next start and 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 watch these guys that's why they pay attention during the game they watch the hitters and uh, they can help each other out because I can't see everything Garcia with a nice catch and Jung Ho Gung is out Ray well let's get back to work well, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ray. Ray Sirich, Pirates pitching coach. Bucks up 3-0, heading to the bottom of the third.
Chevy Silverado and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go box. 3-0 Pirates heading to the bottom of the third inning. Jeff Locks retired six straight, and there is uh, Steve and Greg. Steve's on the trip, and uh, Greg ran in between innings and gave us this. A full-sized batting helmet. It's three pounds of ice cream. Full of ice cream, bananas, whipped cream, strawberries. <laughs> oh, man, this is incredible. Yeah, bananas. It's got a half a dozen bananas in here, so it's got to be good for you. Yeah, right? look at all the potassium that's in oh. this baby. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you can use the helmet to get hit by a foul ball if yeah. you're after. Right. If we ever finish it. Mm. Gordon Beckham up. That was good, isn't it? Yep. That's very nice of the White Sox and Greg to bring that up to us. I'm glad I didn't have dessert at dinner. I know you were not having dessert for a reason. There's a high chopper, Jung Ho, underneath that's got to make a quick throw, and he gets it. So one out. For Chicago in the third. Who can make a quick throw? Very good. Getting that ball out of the glove. What else is in there? Cherries, whipped cream. What do you want? What kind of ice cream? Strawberry, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. Lots of ice cream. Neapolitan. Very good. I'm just going to stick with the bananas and the whipped cream and the ice cream and the cherries. Here, let's put this down in front of you. Let's flip it out. And this one is foul back. Excuse me. Mm hmm. They do have some food around this place. Yes, they do. Now, if we let that, if we let that melt, we can make a shake out of that. This one is drilled towards center field. Marte is there, and Giovanni Soto is out. And, and because it has bananas in it and strawberries, it would be a kind of a health shake. Yeah. Take a look. Yeah, so you get a workout just by oh. doing this. So it's healthy for you. It's good for you. Let's try some of the chocolate. Oh yeah, let's make the, make some room for the chocolate down there. Yum yum. Need something to wash it down with. Two down and Carlos Sanchez, the second baseman, takes a strike. That will come later. <laughs> Did you get to the chocolate yet? Yeah, I have some. Oh, very good. There we go. And the pitch is on the inside corner for a strike call. Nothing in two. Well, you can have the rest. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll have it done by the top of the ninth. There's a two strike pitch. Swing and a foul ball. Boy, Locke's pitching. He's going to have this inning done before we get through the top layer. I thank Ray Sirridge again for joining us. Ray is. Uh, He's one of a kind, isn't he? Ray would love to have some of this ice cream. Yeah. And I like to. Uh, I think Steve might like a bit of it. Maybe we should share it with them. No. Bad idea? Yep. Let's see. Count is one and two. And that one is strike three. How about that? A 10 pitch inning for Locke. He has retired nine in a row to start the game. We'll go to the fourth.
midweek fireworks spectacular as Zambelli fireworks light up the sky presented by service link. Don't forget Father's Day's right around the corner. Pirates tickets make a great gift. Get yours at pirates.com. On with Bob Walk and Robbie Insmukowski, I'm Tim Neverett. U.S. Cellular Field is where we are and on the UPMC scoreboard. Pirates with a 3 0 lead starting the top of the fourth inning. Talking about fireworks, they'll have fireworks there. That's part of the exploding scoreboard here that was originally installed when this park was first built. It made a lot of changes here since, but that has remained. Francisco Cervelli. Swing and strike. Old Comiskey Park had that, which was uh, about a block from here. Cervelli hitting 322. He struck out swinging in the first. John Danks delivers. And Cervelli hits one in the air to left center field. And over to get it is Melky Cabrera for out number one. <laughs> Well, no dessert for a week now. No, no we know that there will be no dessert for at least one more day. Didn't think we we're going to have any tonight. We were surprised. Jordy Mercer takes a strike. They'll get their dessert later. If they don't have any, we have three pounds of ice cream we could send down. I think you're right, though. It's going to melt fast. Jordy hits one well to center field straight away. Eaton going back, and Eaton <laughs> makes the catch on the warning track. How about Jordy? Hitting everything hard. He hit a, a laser beam the third, first time up, and now hits one hard to 400 feet straight away. Ganey Health Network Supermo slowing down Eaton's path to the baseball. So two men out for the Pirates and Sean Rodriguez at the plate. And he will take all the way and that's a strike. Sean hit his third home run of the season last night. Bounces one to the right side here. Abreu grabs it. And the Pirates will be retired. In order for the second time tonight. Three, three and a half in Chicago. It's the Pirates three, White Sox nothing. Rehab start this afternoon for double A Harrisburg. Five innings, along two runs, one earned, four hits, struck out six. He threw 71 pitches, 48 of them.
four strikes. And Strasburg trying to make his way back to the Nationals. As we will after tomorrow night's game, we'll head over to D.C. Three game weekend series with Washington, but still work to be done here in Chicago. Pirates up three nothing. Jeff Locke so far so good. He'll face the top of the order for just the second time. And a meet. Grounded out back to Jeff. His first time up. He was 0 for 1. One thing you look at this team, Bob, they don't take many walks, and Adam Eaton, their leadoff man, has half as many walks as the team's walk leader. And that is Adam LaRoche. LaRoche with 32 walks. Eaton has 18. And Eaton is second on the team. In walks. Take a very aggressive approach at the plate. Get fewer base runners as a result. At least that's the way it's working out this year. Two strike pitch. And it hit him. And that's the first base runner of the game for the White Sox, and it comes on a hit batsman. I really hung in there. He didn't move much until it was too late. He left that. Uh, that pad of his down uh, it, right there just just glanced off it right to the glove. That's a shame. Lead off hitter aboard. Melky Cabrera grounded out to Mercer at short in the first 0 for 1. Lock delivers a strike. So far in this ball game, Sean, it's a great command of his fastball. Despite the fact that he just got one inside a little bit too far, but you know, he's way ahead to count. He's trying to get something in on his hands. And we always talk about before lock pitches that that's going to be one of the keys for him is the fastball uh, control and can he get the ball inside on the hands of on the lefties and especially these right hand hitters. First, Eaton stole second last night in the first inning. Charlie Morton. So really keeping an eye on him. A 1 1 pitch from Jeff. 2 and 1. Pretty good spot with that pitch. Much hit the glove. And two one. Three and one. Mock has one interleague start this season. It was against the Minnesota Twins at PNC Park. Got a no decision in that one. Went six. Four and one in seven career interleague starts. There you go. Spow ball. Here count it three and two. Three balls and two strikes. Full count pitch to Melky Cabrera. Go to first, and check to see if Eaton was going to take off. Jose Abreu on deck. Payoff pitch. Ground ball line of third. Us in the booth, you can use the hashtag Bucks Booth. University does the same umpire crew travel along with the teams during his home and home series. The answer is yes, and they 
keep their rotation intact as well. That's Tom Hallion, the crew chief. It's really a, just a four game series. It is. That's a debate that people have. No, I don't debate anybody about it. Well, no, I'm talking about others. They, they pitch has fouled off. In fact, both the White Sox and the Pirates uh, press notes indicate a Pirate two game sweep over the first two games of this, but I don't agree. I don't see how that can be the case. When you're playing four straight games against the same team and the same crew travels and same umpire crew travels. See, now you're debating. Oh, no, I'm not debating. I'm just justifying. The pitch runner goes, swung on and missed, throw down by Cervelli. Not in time to get Eaton. A stolen base for Adam Eaton. Cabrera strikes out. Strikeout number six for Locke. Ventura is coming out. They've called him out for interference. Interference. And they're saying that Cabrera interfered with Cervelli's throw, so the base runner Eaton is out. Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire, and Robin Ventura discussing it. Well, he immediately made the call. You can see the umpire right there. See him pointing at him. He's pointing at the interference immediately. Not a stolen base. He is out. Interference and Robin Ventura has been tossed. The frustration's boiling over with Ventura. This team just completed their third winless road trip losing three in Tampa Bay losing two in Pittsburgh and uh, he's now talking to Tom Hallion about his side of the story you know, get to see this very often anymore Arguments. Ventura's is yeah, visibly upset, but I don't really think he put on that good of a show, do you? <laughs> I thought he'd be more upset. Uh, yeah, he's animated. Right there, called for interference, and it happened to be on strike three. So it turns into two outs. And Ventura pushing the wrong button and gets run from the ball game. That was about as good as it got right there. Yeah, so now bench coach Mark Parent will take over as manager for the rest of the game. Parent had skippered the team recently on the road trip in Tampa Bay while Ventura was attending the graduation of his daughter out in Southern California. Parent takes over early in the game. Bottom of the fourth, three nothing Pirates. Two outs, nobody on. One one, and a ground ball to the right side, a base hit. First hit off of Lock tonight. Hit it where nobody was home. That's a, an important call now. That interference it was followed up with a base hit. Chance out, but I got to run home. Bray at first, Garcia at the plate, two down. And Garcia takes a strike. He struck out swinging in the second. One ball and one strike. See the batter's interference called all that often, especially on a strike three. You see it every now and again, though, but not every day. Normally, a 
we have seen it, and you're right, it's it's rare. There's contact. I think it even makes it a, a, a rarer call. You would see it less when there there's no contact in between the the hitter and the catcher. Cervelli keeps it nearby. Another tweet comes in. Says, does that go in the book as a caught stealing? And, and the answer, David, is no. It does not. Francisco Cervelli gets credit for both putouts. Gets the putout on the strikeout, and he gets the putout on the batter's interference. So two unassisted. A good question. I'm not sure how to write that one down. <laughs> Full count now to Abasail Garcia. Two down and a Brayu at first base. Time is called by first base umpire Dan Bellino. Ready to go again. Jeff looking for a strike here on a 3 2 pitch. Abreu takes off. Swung on and a ground ball to third. John Ho's got it. Myers on to first. And that'll do it for the White Sox. No runs, one hit, and one left. Heading to the fifth inning at U.S. Cellular Field. Native Dominican Republic for a first person account of where he comes from to his elementary school, spending time with his family and even hanging out with current teammate Starling Marte. Driven Gregory Polanco tonight after post game on Root Sports. And Gregory going to hit this inning second. Three nothing Pirates with the lead, just one hit for the White Sox. In with two outs in the fourth. And John Dank set to face Corey Hart. All right, a strikeout victim in the second. Average down to 178 for Corey. He swings and hits a ground ball to short. Alexei Ramirez is on the first base to get him one out. And Hart is 0 for 2. John Dance's second career start against Pittsburgh. He got a win almost five years to the day, June 16, 2010, at PNC Park. Went eight innings, scattered four hits in that game. A little different team out there now. It is. One thing that's been going wrong for Danks has been giving up a lot of hits coming into the game tonight. Since the 21st of May, he has the highest batting average against in the American League. 344 hitters have been hitting off. 
Breaking ball taken for a strike. And it's 0 2 to Polanco. And Cooper, the pitching coach, looking on, and his guys have done an okay job. His uh, offense just had got any runs for his pitchers. That low run support. And then there's that first inning thing where they've been giving up a lot of runs 56 runs in the first inning. Look what happened in game one of this series on uh, Monday. That game was essentially over in the first. Pirates put five up. Two balls and two strikes. Well, just, you know, I mean, three tonight. That puts you in a, in a, in a big hole. I mean, three runs is a lot. He, you, know, you see that three up there in the first inning, you haven't even hit yet. And already, you know, even if you shut him out for the rest of the game, you're going to have to score four to win the game before you've even done anything. So it's it's tough to give up uh, multiple runs in the first inning. And you just have to fight back the, the whole night. Seems like you know, chip away, and then you know, if the other team, the Pirates in this case, can add on occasionally, then. That's uh, kind of goes to what you were saying. There. Game's over before you can get started. And Jay Hay batting with two outs. Takes a strike. Josh is one for two with a double and a run scored in the first. And a comebacker. This will be a quick inning for the Buckos as Banks throws over. Tires the side in order for the second inning in a row. Took him just 10 pitches. Their legends. Number nine, Minnie Minoso passed away on March 1st at the age of 90. He played 17 years in the big leagues, 12 of them with the Chicago White Sox. Now, his number nine was retired back in 1983, and his statue is prominently displayed in center field here at the ballpark. Got a few shots of it earlier today. Now, he was known as the Cuban Comet. He was a seven-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove winner, and the first black major leaguer in the city of Chicago in 1951. And get this, he made an immediate impact homering in his first at-bat in a Sox uniform. Now, he formed a bond last season with fellow Cuban Jose Abreu, just one of the many lives Minnie Minoso touched him, Bob. Certainly a, a legend around these parts, for sure. Orestes Minnie Minoso. 1,835 games had a career average of 298. It's real good. Over 1,000 RBIs. 605 extra base hits. Roche takes the 0 2 outside. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, a lot of 
famous name baseball players of wore that White Sox uniform. Great tradition history here. We we're looking at that uh, in the press room on the wall. A lot of lists of other famous uh, guys. It was Luke Appen. Two, two pitch bounced foul. You remember those old timers games they used to have back in. Uh, this was the late 80s. Yeah. Luke Affling had a home run in one of those games. And was probably pushing 80 when he did it. <laughs> and down on strikes goes Adam LaRoche for the second time tonight. The White Sox designated hitter takes a seat to start the fifth. Six strikeouts for Jeff Locke. Shortstop Alexi Ramirez. He struck out looking in the second, 0 for 1. All of those strikes to Ramirez. This one bounced foul, and it's a one ball, one strike count. The Pirates put all three runs on the board in the first inning. Andrew McCutcheon with an RBI single. And Jung Ho Gung, a two run opposite field home run on the first pitch he saw. Lineup hitter is supposed to do, huh? Up with the big long ball. The more we see him play, the more things we like about his game. I agree with that. We did not have a, a chance because he was playing in, in Korea, obviously, to, to see him. Before spring training of this year, and he has really developed well in this pirate ball club. Pitch is fouled back well, in the seats. I, I think everything about his game was a question mark you know, to everybody when the spring training started. How was he going to field? I don't know. Nobody had ever seen yeah. him really. Uh, you're right. And uh, you everything know, was a question. Could he hit for average? What kind of running speed does he have? Where the power numbers that he had in Korea were those going to be able to transfer to to here? And uh, for the most part, all these answers have been very, very positive. One, two to Ramirez, and the schedule here was one thing that I would say a slight concern over whether he could adjust to or not because. In Korea, they play 128 games here, 162. Three games on, and then a day off over there. He's adapted nicely. Sierra Ramirez now with a 2 2 count. Jeff Locks 2 2 pitch. A little bit low, and the count is full 3 and 2. Beckham on deck, third baseman. Payoff pitch called, strike three. And for the second time, Ramirez has gone down looking. And strikeout number seven for Locke. This is the second time he has uh, disagreed with that inside fastball call. The last time he stood up there and uh, had a nice discussion about it. This time he kind of smiles and walks away. And this strikeout ties a season high for Jeff. He also had seven strikeouts against the team on the north side. Struck out seven Cubs at PNC Park on the 23rd of April. 
two outs in the next pitch to Beckham is hit high in the air to left field playable for Sean Rodriguez. And in four of the five innings tonight. Jeff Locke has retired the side in order. He's won over the minimum through five. Performing July 9th at Stage AE. And here at U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago, along with Bob Walk and Robbie Insmikowski, I'm Tim Neverett. Jeff Locke rolling tonight through five. Pirates with a 3 0 lead on the UPMC scoreboard. Starling Marte drives this pitch deep to right center field, still carrying, and Adam Eaton up against the wall tracks it down. Success going back to the wall as Marte gave that one a ride. And looking at the, the flags to see if if they're doing something off the bat, it kind of looked like warning track. And even Eaton started to slow down well before he got to the track. And then he had to pick it back up again when he saw that uh, he was going to have to go all the way to the chain link fence to haul that one down. Not really doing a whole lot. No. Kind of hanging there, but that ball. They seem to get a little extra boost once it got out there. I guess the boots came from Marte. This ballpark different than the one on the north side due to the wind. Wrigley Field is a different ballpark when it blows in as opposed to when it blows out. The park plays completely different, but here a little bit more normal comparatively speaking. Yeah, well, we'll close it in. A big tall stadium that kind of blocks the wind, so it doesn't have quite the, the same effect. 2-0 pitch popped up middle of the infield. Banks pointing for some help. He gets it from the second baseman Carlos Sanchez. Yeah, it's a tough time of night. Where it's not really a black sky yet. You can lose one up there. Which is now two for three. Well, two down for the Pirates. Danks has really settled down. He's set down nine in a row since McCutcheon's last hit in the third. Gun takes a strike. Nice. Tweet came in. Got to see it again. Do you like Jung Ho's first pitch swinging approach at the plate? Only when it goes out of the ballpark. So three times you've liked this. Yes, I've liked it. All. <laughs> and it, it doesn't really, you know, matter a whole lot. The only time where you don't like somebody swinging at the first pitch is when they're. They're swinging at bad pitches, pitchers' pitches, and, and making outs. If guys are getting a something good to hit up in the strike zone, 
You know, sure, take a run at it. If you look at the numbers, when guys put the ball in play, most of the time they hit over 300 on those balls. Go to the bottom of the six, three nothing, Pirates. Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! Pirates and White Sox interleague play continuing. At U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. Pirates a 3 to nothing lead. As we go to Bottom of the sixth. Giovanni Soto will lead off against Jeff Locke. And some folks supporting their teams here. Stanley Cup champions will be in the house tomorrow. Soto 0 for 1. He lined out to center field to Starling Marte, his first time up. One ball and one strike. It's in the back of his shirt, thirsty or hungry for the question mark? I think the answer to that is yes. A little thirsty right now, not so much hungry. Nice, we we nice were pain. hungry. Yeah. yeah, until the entire now dairy we're cow showed up in a batting helmet. We're just thirsty now. One hit in the air to center field. And Marte handles it easily for the first out of the White Sox sixth inning. Pirates host the Cincinnati Reds Thursday, June 25th at 7.05. First 20,000 receive a Pirates replica camo cap. Thanks to PNC Bank. Father's Day coming up. Pirates tickets make the perfect gift. Get your tickets for dad at pirates.com. Uh, Troy Palomalo jersey. We saw Mario Lemieux jersey earlier. Only Pittsburgh Pro teams represented here tonight. In fact, we're going to see a bunch of those. DC. Oh, I think so. Weekend driving distance. Yep. And two afternoon games: a four o'clock game on Saturday yep. and a one o'clock game on Sunday. You can go to the game Sunday, drive back, be home at a reasonable hour. 0 2 to Sanchez. One ball, two strikes. And the 1 2 pitch. In there, called strike three. A new season high in strikeouts for Jeff with eight. There's been quite a few of them just like that. The fastball right on the inside corner, right hand hitter stands them up. Looking pitch. 
Sanchez has struck out twice. There are two men gone. And Adam Eaton up for just the third time in the game. And Eaton takes a strike. Eaton was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. Takes it low and away. Two balls and a strike to the center fielder for Chicago. Getting him into it at a young age. It's great. Cervelli wanted the strike, didn't get it, and Jeff falls behind three balls and a strike. Cervelli said something to him also after he threw the ball back. Pretty good pitch. Can't say a lot though because uh, Locke has been uh, getting the edges. There's a strike. The edge pitch. Payoff pitch from Jeff Locke to Adam Eaton. Walked him. Breaking ball. Eaton down to the first base for the second time without the benefit of a hit. Two out walk brings up Melky Cabrera. Jeff has retired 14 of 16 hitters. A little help with the batter's interference in the fourth inning when Cabrera was up and Eaton, Eaton was trying to steal second. Cabrera's rule to have gotten in the way of Cervelli. Home plate umpire Alfonso Marquez ruled Eaton out, and it was on a swinging strike three, so it turned into two outs in the same play. A one now to Cabrera. There goes Eaton, and a rip down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Eaton's going to come around third. Sean Rodriguez double clutches. He was going to throw to second base. Nobody there. And that ends the Pirates scoreless innings streak at 35 and two thirds innings. Two out walk. That opened the door a little bit. Ball ripped down uh, inside the bag. But you're right, uh, Sean came up and. Uh, he wanted to fire that ball to second base, but there was nobody there. And Eaton with the head start scores easily. It's a three to one ball game now. And the third hitter in the order, Jose Abreu, is up. Abreu got the first hit of the ball game in the fourth inning. Presenting the tying run. Well, the White Sox have not been shut out three times in a row in quite a long time. Back to the late 60s. That's not going to happen now tonight. 35 and two thirds scoreless. It's the most since 1972. Just missed it by a third of an inning. Tying the 72 team. Steve took a deep breath over there. <laughs> Steve, your team's record is safe. Cabrera double number seven. That's the second hit off of Jeff Locke. And now falls behind to Brayu. Three and oh. And he walked him on four pitches. And the tying run is aboard. Avisael Garcia, the cleanup man, coming up. He's 0 for 2. You see how quickly the other team can get into the ball game when you know, suddenly you're, you're giving free passes? It's going to get the bullpen stirring. 
Even with two two outs, nobody on, it can happen fast. I mean, considering Locke has done a tremendous job tonight and has given up just two hits, the two walks this inning. The, the, the first one ball. was a yeah, the two outs, nobody on. He decided to go with a three-two breaking ball, missed by quite a bit with it. He had a, a do-over on that one. He might. More of you know, go right at him. I have a three run lead. Archimedes Camonero getting loose. Not two on and two out. This is the most activity the White Sox have had. On base in this game. Adam Eaton getting around third base this inning. First time the Pirates have allowed a man to third since the game Sunday with the Phillies. And Garcia rips a base hit to left field. Rodriguez will come up throwing. And it is through and safe at the plate is Cabrera. It's now a one run ball game at three to two. That curveball looked like the way he went after it. It looked like there was going to be a, a possible play at the plate. Well, Sean got to the ball fairly quickly, but throw off the line or up the line. Well, Garcia with his first hit. Drives in the Second run for the White Sox, and now Adam LaRoche, who has struck out swinging twice, takes ball one inside. Want to know the count? Swing and a miss. Alessandro Garcia. He had a hit in the series. He did not. That was his first hit against the Pirates. Two outs and runners in scoring position. Adam three for 19. And he hits a ground ball down to first base. Corey Hart grabs it. And he will win the foot race to first. But the White Sox strike for two runs on a couple of hits.
series finale. Garrett Cole against Jeff Samarja. Cole, 10 wins. ERA of 171. Amazingly. He has gone through this season so far, and he'll take his act to the mound against former Cub. Jeff Samarja. Coverage begins on Root Sports at 7.30 tomorrow night. Jeff Locke touched up for just two hits in the six, but two walks didn't help his cause. Two out walk to Adam Eaton. Eaton came across third for the first run, and then Cabrera would score and the base hit by Garcia. Cabrera still up and throwing. Lock may be done after six. Cervelli leading off the seventh. Pirates have gone down ten in a row against Dax. Since McCutcheon had a base hit in the third inning, so Cervelli trying to get things going again here later in the ballgame. Now just a one run game. Ball and a strike to Francisco Cervelli. And Cervelli drills this one. Eaton on the run, and he will make the catch. A tumbling circus catch. By Adam Eaton records the first out of the Pirates seven. Looked like a wide receiver going up with two hands to catch a football. Thanks for a little tip of the cap. Thank you very much. This ball drilled into the gap. Hey, Eaton really showing good speed. Going up with both hands to corral that one. Look at that. <laughs> Catching it at its highest point. The play. Now the question is, we're both feet in bounds. A strike called to Mercer, and it's 0-2 to Jordy. Jordy tonight is 0 for 2. He has hit the ball hard on the nose twice, right at people. Once the third, once the center. And this one will number up the first base side. Abreu will handle it. It's an easy out for the White Sox. Two men gone in the top of the seventh. Sometimes they don't even out. That even out, you think that number would have gone through. Been like a yeah. little infield hit, swinging bond or something. And when they were getting ready. Sean Rodriguez is over two. I was looking for a little separation as this game gets later. And Danks has uh, really settled down. And the 1 0. Back. Two and one to Sean. Rodriguez hit both balls to Abreu. Popped up to him in the second inning and grounded out to him in the fourth. And this one is fouled away. He stays even to Sean Rodriguez. Two pitch from Danks. Outside count is full three and two. Corey Hart in the on deck circle. Three two pulled foul. Danks at 92 pitches. And the payoff. That's followed up. In spite, Bob, of the way the game began for Danks, he has pitched very respectably since. Yeah, it wasn't what I expected to, to see happen with the just really poor staff sheet he has. 
This is one of his better games of the season, you would think. Giving up just four base hits. And make it five as this one goes to right center field. Sean Rodriguez, a two out single. That ends a long string of retirees for Dance. Rodriguez now one for three. Got that one just high enough. Mark Parent on the left, the acting manager, Robin Ventura, thrown out early in the game. Fourth inning. Corey Hart hits this one high in the air to left center field. Adam Eaton calling for it. Eaton will make the catch. And the Pirates retired in the seventh. It is stretch time in Chicago. Pirates three, White Sox two. Given up on just three hits and he struck out a season high eight. They really had that excellent command for most of the night, especially that fastball. So it's really something that we can look for almost every time he goes out there. When he can keep those right hand hitters on us, and that fastball inside, it makes them so much easier for the curveball and the change. Numbers on Jeff 99 pitches for Locke, 60 of those for strikes. Archimedes Caminero takes over. Caminero will face Alexi Ramirez, the shortstop. Start things off in the bottom of the seventh of a one run ball game. Now it's going to be up to the Bucks' bullpen to hang on. Yeah, the hard throw, uh, a right hander, has been doing a good job this year, as you can see by the, uh, the numbers. First pitch bouncer to the left side, Mercer there. And out at first is the call. Looking at that one uh, back in the White Sox clubhouse. Mark Parent, the acting manager, comes up to the top step of the dugout. Apparently, they have seen a replay and they're calling Ramirez back in. They will not challenge. So, one out. Good play by Jordy Mercer. Really good play. Yeah, excellent. A little extra on it. Close. Stretched by Sean. An inch. Got him by an inch. Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl giving us a terrific look right there. That's a bang bang play. Pitch outside to Kai Gillespie. Gillespie, left handed hitter in there for Gordon Beckham, both third baseman.
Now tries to bunt. And this ball will be fielded by Cervelli. Throws to first. And he got him. The two really close places. A place, rather, at first base. I'll tell you what, that's about as far as wow. you'll see a catcher go. And my parent will sit down again. They won't challenge. So two, three on the put on. Terrific how about play. how far Cervelli had to go after this punt? Look at that. I mean, he's two thirds of the way up to the mound. He, he's almost at the edge of the mound on his follow through after he threw the ball to first. Well, Gillespie is out. Two men gone. Goes the new first baseman, Sean Rodriguez. He's coming from left field. And Jose Tabata has come into the ball game. And Sean coming in from left. Corey Hart is out. And Tabata now in left. It's the second really good stretch that he's made. He got part of his foot stepped on too. Yeah. Come for the job, getting stepped on down there, Keith. Huh? Strike to Giovanni Soto. Hundred miles an hour. See where this pitch was. It looked pretty good. Yeah, it did look pretty good. Oh my! It looked really good. How is that not a strike? It was, but just didn't get called. Wow! Oh, Alfonso Marquez missed it. Barry should be coming to the plate in the eighth. That wasn't even borderline. Now the payoff pitch from Caminero. And it's popped up. Foul ground. Jung Ho Gung and Francisco Cervelli converging, and one of them got it. So Cervelli made the catch. Well, Jung Ho's okay. So they get the out regardless. In the middle of the conversation, and they've uh, got things squared away apparently. Well, the guy that needed to be in that conversation was Caminero. He's got to be over the directing traffic. It's the pitcher's job to make sure that there are no collisions on pop flies in the infield. And normally that is uh, going to be the third baseman's ball all the way. He's coming in. 
but if Cervelli doesn't hear anything, then he doesn't know he's got help. The, the, the pitcher has to be over there and uh, and direct traffic. If uh, if he sees that that Gung is is calling for it and he can make the play, you start yelling his name and. If you physically have to go over there and, and you know put your hands on somebody to make sure they don't run into him, then you do that. Former Pirate Zach Duke on the hill now replaces John Danks. 28th appearance for Duke. Facing Gregory Polanco. 9 1 and 2 do up for the Pirates. Duke very fond of Pittsburgh in his days with the Pirates. Some great memories there. He's an opening day starter, an all star. You remember the home opener? Just a complete game. A good chat with uh, Zach earlier today. And, uh, I said, Are you, you grateful you were born a lefty? He said, You know it. <laughs> Things didn't work out for him as a starter after a while. Now he's been able to stay employed as a major league pitcher, as a left handed reliever. Two and two to Gregory. Polanco's 0 for 2 tonight. Notice the way that Soto's throwing the ball back to the pitcher. He's been doing that for three days. A little bit odd. Really odd. There's a quote from. Uh, The announcers in Oakland. He had some strong words to say about the way he throws. Catch the excitement of Pirates baseball at PNC Park this summer with the Pirates Summer Six Pack presented by Papa John's for as low as $99. Lock in your seats and price when you build your own six game plan. Plus, each Summer Six Pack comes with a complimentary large two topping pizza from Papa John's. Find out more at pirates.com slash summer. Josh Harrison to face Duke. The ball ball says he does not have the yips. It has nothing to do with that. He just feels comfortable throwing the ball back like that. One oh. One one. Let's see him do it again here. Maybe throws it around the infield like after a strike three is his throw down the third base would be kind of odd too. But when he's uh, in a hurry uh, when someone's steal stealing uh, then he has no problem at all. He looks totally normal when he throws the ball there. Josh to right field. Abisail Garcia under it for out number two. Well, his time with the Cubs you know we saw him catch a lot. I don't remember him doing no, that. No this is something mm -hmm. that he started. Yeah, I, I, I think that at some point. He probably had a little bit of a problem throwing the ball back to the pitcher, and this is uh, what he is doing to, to help himself in that regard. And, hey, whatever it takes, doesn't matter. Martinez over two. Well, Duke told me a story today about Ray Searage. He said when he was in the minor leagues. He said Ray was the guy that if you didn't think you were pitching well you could ask him to come watch you throw in the bullpen. And he would and he'd, he'd get done with you and Zach said he'd make you feel like a Cy Young winner when you were done. So that's the talent that he's got safe at first base. Is Marte. Wow the, the fans are, are really loud down the line. They, they don't like the call but. Well I think Mark Parent. Has seen too many close calls for his liking. He wants to challenge this and see if he wins it or not. He might, but uh, he's he's been up and down, up and down. Last inning or so, it's a third real close play at first base. Let's get a look here. Was he safe or was he out? Out. It's like he stepped on the base a little bit short. Hey, he lunged at it. He had to take a 
See that long stride and he got right on the front side of the base. That's not good. Well, it looked like he got him. Here's the call. Well, maybe not. They're just talking to each other. Usually when they reach for the head snatch, you figure the review's over. Dan Bellino, the umpire on the left, and the crew chief Tom Hallion is on the right. Marte seems to be working it out. Trainer Todd Tomzik is out there with him. Oh, he's going to stay in the ball game. That's good. Uh, you, you hate to see one of your speed guys have any kind of a problem with their feet or their ankle. And Marte is indeed ruled out. One, two, three, go the Pirates in the top half of the eighth inning. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Starling Marte just getting out on the field right now. A little bit gimpy after stepping on first base in a funny manner. They might have had that ankle tape. That's why he's getting out there a little late. Yep, they worked on him quickly. The ankle taped up. So now Marte ready to go. Not quite at his position yet. And Tony Watson is on the pitch for the Pirates in the eighth inning. Watson facing Carlos Sanchez. Tony's numbers this season. Working a lot. 33 games. And slowly hit ground ball to the right side. Rodriguez tosses to Watson. He beats Sanchez to the back. One out for the White Sox in the bottom of the eighth. Adam Eaton in the seventh inning made the last out. Caught the ball from Corey Hartman. And over there made a new friend. Got to take care of the, the kids. That's what it's all about. Pitch to Eaton. 
Call ball one. Wheaton is 0 for 1. He's been hit by a pitch and walked, and he scored the first run in the sixth inning. Too. That's what happens sometimes when you're trying to, to frame a pitch. You know, if all you're thinking is I've got to catch the ball, you might push that glove down a little further as you're catching it, but that's going to make it look like it's low. So you're trying to catch that ball with just the edge of the glove. You have most of that glove hanging out in the strike zone. Eaton hits a ground ball to second base. Harrison flips on the first for the out. That way it makes the ball look like it's a strike. Two men out now for Chicago. If you're traveling and want to watch your Pirates, subscribe to MLB.tv Premium for live or on demand on over 400 devices, real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Two outs, Melky Cabrera, switch hitter batting right handed. Shortens up and takes a ball. Jung Ho Gung at third base, bumped into Cervelli before, and they made the last out in the seventh inning. Jung Ho's okay. <laughs> Well, if you want to face Cabrera here, you want to face him right handed. And 242 overall, but hitting about a buck seven right handed. Trying to get hit. He wants to get on any way he can, apparently. Two one to Cabrera. Popped him up. That is foul. Ramp in the seats. Cabrera has been around a little bit. You know, the Yankees, the Braves, the Royals, Giants. Last two years with the Blue Jays, now here in Chicago with the White Sox. That pitch just off the plate. For career hitter. And the payoff pitch from Watson. And Cabrera lines it to center field and it's knocked down by Marte. And he will hold Cabrera to a base hit. Marte limping around. Yeah, with well, a uh, one run ball game. Two outs, nobody on. Everybody was playing very deep, trying to guard against an extra base hit. And because of that, you're going to give up a, a single that normally would probably be caught if you were playing a normal defense. If you don't want anything to get hit over your head, you're way, way back there, and that one you just can't get there in time. At first two down and Abreu at the plate. Jose takes a strike. Outfield again, very deep in this scenario with a tying run first base. Same thing, you can't get you can't give up a double. You can't get a ball over your head. Everybody way back there. John Paul down at third, just a, about a step and a half off the chalk line. Making sure that nothing gets by him. To his right, it's going to be fair that can get down in that corner and possibly score Cabrera from first base. Nothing and one to Abreu. Now it's nothing and two. So really wanting that fastball up. High target. Tony able to execute the pitch. Now what? Take a peek in here. Oh no. Fastball in. 
A higher target. Two outs, tying run first. And the 0 2 pitch coming to Abreu. Struck him out. Tony Watson retires the side with a punch out, gives up a hit, and the White Sox leave a man. We're on to the ninth inning. Automotive this day in Pirates history. This date, 2009, in an interleague game at the Metrodome. Andrew McCutcheon hit his first career home run. He came off of Liriano in an 8 2 Pirate win. Three two here. Pirates trying to protect their lead. Perhaps extend it. McCutcheon will lead off with Jung Ho Gun and Francisco Cervelli. He'll face David Robertson. Robertson will now pitch for the White Sox in the top of the ninth. 38 strikeouts in just 26 innings. Tough to get a hit off of. Batting average against 182. Ben Hurdle involved in a conversation. Ben Potenziano, one of the trainers. From the Starling Marte, whether or not he will stay in or not to the bottom of the ninth inning. But uh, Marte limping. Uh, looks like he was uh, headed off to the clubhouse. McCutcheon is two for three tonight. He's pushing 300 for his batting average, hitting a 297. Takes a strike. One pitch coming to Kutch. And strike two is called. Graze the outside edge. Robertson hasn't pitched since the tenth against the Houston Astros. Kutch and fouls it back. Since 2008, he has struck out 562 batters. That's the most among active relievers in Major League Baseball during that time. Mark Melanson warming up. Breaking ball outside. One and two to Kutch. Kutch singled in a run in the first inning. And single again with two outs in the third. Pirates got all their runs in the first. A 
Doubled by Harrison, a base hit by McCutcheon, and a two run homer by Jung Ho Gun. Since then, the Pirates' bats have been relatively quiet. Only two hits since the first inning. One belongs to McCutcheon, one to Sean Rodriguez. Two and two. It can be a tough thing sometimes to score in the first and not add on and still win the ball game. Right-handers hitting 193 against Roberts in this season. Righties collectively 11 for 57. That's the White Sox reliever. Lefties hitting worse. This one down to third base. Gillespie up with it. Goes to first to get McCutcheon. One out in the Pirates' half of the ninth inning. John Ho Gong didn't waste any time when he got to the plate in the first inning. Very first pitch he saw from John Danks, he lost over the right field wall. Third time this year, he's had a first pitch homer. He has four home runs total. RBI is 23 and 24 for John Ho Gong, and that swing right now has proven to be the difference in the ball game. Foul past third. First pitch is swinging just like he did on the home run, except this time he tried to pull that pitch that was away from him instead of go the other way. See, then he puts the sticky stuff all the way down on covering up the knob. He must uh, hang his finger off. A little finger. Yes, yep, that's hand. why he puts the uh, the sticky stuff. Don't really know what it is. I just know it's really sticky. It's really sticky. Yeah. Like the ice cream that's left over in our helmet from earlier. I, I, I know that if you put it on the tips of your fingers, yeah. you can just touch the baseball and lift your hand up, and the ball is just hanging there. Really? Yeah, that's how sticky that stuff is. You never took any of that out to the mound with you, did no, you? No, you're not allowed. That's you can't take a one of sticks out there. It's against the rules. I think somebody would see that. I mean, do, you could do it in the dugout, stick your fingers before you go out, right? Oh, well, have it already. Yeah, but it would, it would wear off. Two and one to Jung Ho. Pitch from Robertson. Two and two. You never would have thought of doing something like that during your playing days, anyway. No. Nope. Here comes the 2 2. And Jung Ho files it back. Two two on the way again. That's low. Three and two. Full count to Jung Ho Gun. One out. Top of the ninth inning. That's a three two lead. Francisco Cervelli on deck. He'll hit next. One on the ground is short. Ramirez throws low. That's a dug out by Abreu, and there are two men gone for the Bucks in the ninth. More and more, like you have to make that one run stand up. Although the White Sox, they scored their two runs. The same situation. Two outs, nobody on. Man Scott Bonnet taking in the game tonight. And Cervelli tipping his cap to Robertson before he gets going.
Ball one. Cervelli used to catch Robertson of the Yankees. In that dirt. Did you ever think a guy who caught you before and had to face him, Bob, had a, any kind of an advantage against you, knowing what you had, what your tendencies were? You know, it's weird you say that because I, that I did have that feeling. I didn't did not care to do that. And strike call. At least early on, after a while, I, the, the guy that I'm thinking of more than anything else was Tony Pena. The first couple times I faced him, I didn't like it. But then, after just like at any other hitter, after you've thrown to him a little bit, you kind of get him figured out, and then it, then it's fine. It's just like somebody else. But at first, yeah, it's it's weird. Cervelli in the air to right field, and back after it is Adam Eaton. Three outs to go. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Mark Melanson trying to close the door on Chicago. Tomorrow as Garrett Cole takes them on for the Bucks. Our coverage starts at 7.30 tomorrow with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason on Root Sports. Garrett Cole and Jeff Samarja, the matchup in the fourth and final game of this series. Mark Melanson hoping to wrap up game number three and get Jeff Locke a win. Pirates leading by a 3-2 score. Melanson just one blown save opportunity in the season. 21 out of 22. So some changes have been made as Marte has left the ball game. Gregory Polanco moves over to center field. And Sean Rodriguez, his third position of the game, started in left, played first. Now he's in right field. Pedro Alvarez comes out to play first base. And Mark Melanson will face four, five, and six in the White Sox order. Trying to shut this game down and give the Pirates their seventh straight win. Avasail Garcia, one for three. Swings and misses at strike one. McCutcheon, the designated hitter tonight, not in the field. Corey Hart next to him started at first base. And here is the 0 1. Strike two.
Garcia two thirds of the way to becoming a strikeout victim. The hands of Mark Melanson. Mark can get him out. And he strikes him out right there. Oh, good hook. And Cervelli will tag him. Melanson had some nice, uh, nice curveballs in last night's ball game. Is he fun to watch? I just I love watching. He is fun play to the game. Watch. Yeah. Just his mannerisms. Adam LaRoche takes inside for ball one. You know, he knows the hitter's not in a very good mood right there. He just struck out. He, he's upset with the call, and so he just barely touched it, and then then walked over during the uh, little exchange between the hitter and the umpires, wanting to change balls. Strike call to LaRoche. Cervelli has moved up to third in the All-Star balloting. You can help him move up even further. Vote Pirates. Go to Pirates.com. Vote up to 35 times. And another strike. Give more guys the royal treatment. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Well, a lot of good, good hooks. Shift. One two to Little Roche. Inside two and two. What Bob's referring to is the Kansas City Royals right now have eight of the nine. Yeah, they're basically starting the, spots. They're the American League All Stars. That is Kansas City Royals. That's due to the fan voting. They have figured out a way to uh, digital uh, digitally. Is that? I guess digitally. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Can't say that word. Two two fouled off. Stuff the ballot box. There's no more paper ballots for it. Done it with the computer somehow. But right now you look at it's all blue hats for the American League team. Except Trout. Isn't Trout the only he's in there? Only yeah. exception. Two balls and two strikes to Adam LaRoche, the designated hitter. And a ground ball toward right field. Josh Harrison is there. Makes the strong throw to first. Two men out. So the shift plays into that out. And now the White Sox down to their final out tonight. And the bat will be the shortstop, Alexei Ramirez, who is 0 for 3. Ramirez is uh, not like the, uh, the strike zone tonight. Specifically, the inside corner. Ramirez asks for time. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. Melanson's pitch. Inside ball one. Cardinals are losing to the Twins, two to one, bottom of the eighth in Minneapolis. And that pitch is outside, and it's two and zero. Oh. Work out here tonight. They can pick up the game. Here comes the 2-0 pitch from Mark, and it's popped up. This should do it. Mercer backpedaling, still backpedaling, calling for uh -oh, uh -oh. it, uh -oh. and he makes the catch. Tabata Man. was charging him. Just missed him as he ran right by. <laughs> Holding my breath on that one. Seven wins in a row for the Pirates. Mark Melanson is Janu National League saves leader with 22. 
Jung Ho Gung with a home run. Cuts a couple of hits tonight out of the DH spot. And Jeff Locke gets his fourth win. And the Pirates starters keep on rolling. And the Bucks now at a high water mark, 11 games over 500 at 38 and 27. And they've raised it here in Chicago. As the Pirates have taken the first three of this four-game set. Yeah, another great job by the the pitching staff. Basically, in this game, that's what you can. Uh, that's where you can give the credit. To only five hits by the Pirates. Uh, one of those came in that first inning. And they bunched them together. Thank goodness, so they got, were able to get those three runs. Uh, uh, the home run uh, obviously was big, but it's all about the pitching again tonight. Oh. Another good win. Pirates win again. That's seven in a row. Let's go back to Pittsburgh. Rob King and Kent to Culver standing by. <laughs> 